The next group of tools we want to turn our attention to are located in the bottom section of the tool panel and it is contextually dependent upon the select tool. So whatever sub element we choose, whether it's vertices, edges, or faces, then the tools that are available to us once we've made that selection will change contextually. Allow me to demonstrate while creating a piece of armor. This is something you might typically do whenever you're trying to build a kit bashing tool set so that you can reuse individual components in the sculpt room or in the retopple room. So again, I'll just try and create a little chest plate here and another piece of armor. We'll use the strokes tool. So I can turn on steady stroke, but I would advise making sure that you turn that off once you're done because it can cause strange behavior whenever you're working in other tools if you leave it on. And this applies in the sculpt room, the paint room, it doesn't matter. I'm going to turn that off. Make a few more cross sections here and just hit the enter key. I'm right clicking to tweak the individual vertices while I'm still in the strokes tool. So let's go back to the select tool now. By default, we'll be in auto mode, and that means when I hover over a sub object, such as the faces, I'll see it highlighted. And once I click, 3D Coat will automatically switch me to that sub-object mode. You hover over the edges, same thing here, or a vertice. So let's hover over a face. I'll click, and it's automatically switched me, as I mentioned. So let's go ahead and paint select the rest of these. And you'll notice how the tools change here contextually. And Andrew has recently added a new twist here, and that is you now have the ability to make these changes to an, an entire mesh or to just the selected. The first tool we're going to look at is the transform tool. By default, it will be oriented in world space, and that may not be what you want. If you prefer your gizmo to be oriented in local space most of the time, you can check this option in the tool options panel and leave it as a default. Let me go ahead and hit escape. And now when I click the transform tool, you'll see how it's oriented along the average of the normals for that selection. Now if I want to change the gizmo a bit further, if I want to just extrude it outward, I don't really need to make any additional changes. But if I wanted to adjust the pivot point, for example, I can hold down the shift key and move just the gizmo. It's not moving the geometry just the gizmo. Okay. If I want, I can choose center mass and it will center up on the selection or the mesh. I can reset the axis and it will bring it back to world space. So let's go back to main axis. When I'm using the transform tool, if I want to create an extrusion, I can do that by clicking commit extrusion. I don't see anything happening, but what that did is it's allowing me to perform a transform to a new group of faces here. So it committed the geometry that I had selected and then it allowed me to create new extrusions from that. The quickest way to do this though is to hit the enter key. That's the same thing as clicking this button. So I'm going to hit the enter key again. I don't see anything happening, but that allows me to go ahead and create another extrusion. Zoom in. If I want to create another extrusion, again, I'll just hit enter. This time, I don't necessarily have to extrude outwardly. I can just inside the object here, hit the enter key again. Hit the enter key. and I'll hit escape to drop the tool. When you hit escape, it's going to simply drop the tool itself, but it's not going to drop the selection, and that's on purpose. 3D Coat wants to give you an opportunity if you want to use other tools with the selection, you don't have to recreate the selection all over again. And reselect all of these polygons. 
and we'll go back to the transform tool. I want to hold down the shift key. Just change the gizmo orientation a bit. Let's go ahead and create a chest armor plate here. I'll hit the enter key. I'll scale in. Enter key one more time. I'll hit escape to drop the tool, escape to drop the selection. So that's going to be a quick look at the transform tool. And once you're done, we can double click on any one of these meshes. And then I'm going to create a new layer here. And I'll choose move to select a layer. I'm going to double click to name that rib plate. And so now I can just drag that into the models palette. And that gives me a kit bashing asset I can reuse over and over again, whether I'm here in the retopo room or in the sculpt room. So yeah, that's going to be a quick look at the transform tool. In the next video, we'll look at the normal extrude and the free extrude. So stay tuned and thank you for watching.